Getting into amateur radio can have its challenges. A lot of time and effort is spent on exams, collecting equipment and setting up the antennas. Sometimes it's nice to set up a station in a quiet location. It's great to assemble the essential parts and look forward to hearing the stations from around the world. But sometimes, all you get is noise. We're surrounded by noise, it can be hard to find. When strong noise appears, your station can be pretty much useless. It's a big relief when you finally track it down and make it stop. The first step to finding out where the noise is coming from is to study it a little. Is it there all of the time? Is it linked to a particular time of day? Is it coming from your own home or from somewhere else? But noise can be pretty elusive. Every type of noise has its own unique sound and profile. Static from power lines would sound a little different from, say, a bad thermostat in a fish tank or a poorly filtered power supply somewhere. One of the important attributes of radio noise is how far it penetrates up the frequency spectrum. The closer you are to the source, the higher the frequency can be heard. Here we can see a spectrum analyzer listening from around 1 to 200 megahertz and a small receiver tuned to about 10 megahertz. This 50 watt LED flood lamp is a particularly noisy source. See how the noise penetrates halfway across the screen deep into VHF frequencies. When we pick up the lamp and move it away the interference reduces intensity but it reduces from the highest frequencies first. At about 25 metres, the noise only affects the bottom end of the HF band. Trying to work out how high a noise source reaches and how the highest frequency changes with distance is an important part of working out where the noise is coming from. Before we track down a noise source, we'll need a few tools to help us. In this series of videos, we show how to construct a simple direction finding loop antenna we describe how to identify different types of noise and we show some practical examples of how to track down the interference. If this information has helped you to resolve your interference problems, use the QRM Guru website to tell us about your experience. Sharing your own discoveries may help someone else.